Why do we need permaculture urbanism? Actually, there's many answers, but today I'll discuss just one of them, water abundance in cities. I'll start with an example of how permaculture solves water problems on farms, how it doesn't quite solve as many problems in cities, and how permaculture plus urbanism can supply cities with so much water that they can grow their own food even in dry climates, and why that's a really important thing for sustainability. Welcome to Edenicity, best practices for sustainably abundant cities. Whether in the city or in rural areas, floods and droughts are two sides of the same coin. The basic issue is that when water is allowed to just flow through the landscape without encountering many living things, it tends not to be of use to life, and it also becomes a problem in terms of removing large amounts of topsoil from the land and causing erosion. There are many permaculture practices to retain water in a farm landscape. These include swale and dam construction. Swales are irrigation trenches dug on lines of contour. So if you, for example, are walking on that swale on the far left of this picture, you would be walking neither uphill nor downhill. One of the purposes of a swale is to catch all of the water that's coming downhill onto the swale and divert it into a dam as high in the landscape as possible for water storage. Now, as you can imagine, sometimes the dams overflow. In this case, the first place the water goes is into the swales, which if they're designed right, include a spillway down to the next set of swales and dams. And in this picture here, you can see there are three separate dams, each fed by its own system of swales. But swales don't just store water in dams and ponds. They also work with tree systems to store water in the landscape. This is Zaytuna Farm in New South Wales, Australia, a 27 hectare, 66 acre permaculture site operated by Jeff Lawton, one of the premier permaculturists of our time. And just as a quick reminder, permaculture stands for permanent agriculture, the idea being to create agricultural systems that use the principles of natural ecology to produce permanent food and water abundance for human beings. In Zaytuna Farm, swales span the entire property. And what you can see in this swale immediately below me, there's a tree line that zigs and zags. That tree line lies immediately below a swale. The swales run on lines of constant contour, and for that reason you'll often find paths and roadways, usually above the swales. And when we go to, back to this picture, in the soft mound that you can see immediately below me here, on the freshly dug swale, that's where you're going to plant trees. And eventually these turn into forest systems that, when planted with edibles, become food forests. When the swale fills up with rainwater, what happens is it soaks into that soft mound, and the root systems of the trees planted there, and is held in the soil long enough for it to percolate down into the shallow aquifers below. In other words, the rain that would otherwise sheet off of a barren landscape is retained by the layered living system of trees, ground covers, shrubs, and vines that hold the moisture in the soil. This has the effect of buffering floods and droughts. It slows down water that would otherwise flow freely down the slope and gives it time to soak in. Over time, the ponds and groundwater together create an amazingly lush landscape, as you can see in this film from Zaytuna Farm. The food forest exists in multiple layers, much like a natural ecosystem, but in this case, most of the layers contain edibles. By holding the water in the landscape in two separate ways, Zaytuna Farm manages to protect itself against both floods, because it has a lot of storage capacity, and droughts, because then the stored water at the surface and underground is always available. Here's Jeff Lawton demonstrating the water pressure available on Zaytuna Farm. Here you can see the amount of pressure. That's the kind of pressure that we have on our gravity irrigation system. From the top of the property through to close to the bottom, we have an endless amount of gravity irrigation water. Swales and dams are the main input mechanisms the design elements that give us an endless drought-proof recharge for gravity irrigation. Never any need to start a pump here. Now, in an advanced permaculture design, there's a lot more going on beyond the water design. That's just the beginning of the process. The Zaytuna Farm includes, among many other things, cattle grazing laneways with, I think it's 41 separate cattle grazing cells that are all supported by the water system 
of ponds and hydrants that tap into the underground spring lines. Here's why that's important. Mechanized agriculture uses some 40% of the land, and human activity altogether has occupied over half of the land. Unfortunately, because mechanized agriculture is not layered and does not have many species between Earth and sky, it displaces a huge amount of living biomass. This is the mechanism by which we've wiped out half the life on Earth. Now, of the million or so certified permaculture designers throughout the world, most of them are home gardeners in a suburban context. The house on the left is is a typical 500 square meter, one eighth acre lot where you can see layered plantings similar to the food forest that we saw at Zaytuna Farm. In his book, Dirt, the Erosion of Civilizations, Montgomery has shown how layered gardens since antiquity have had the ability to restore soil and reduce water demand with 10 times higher yield per square meter than industrial agriculture. So the hope of permaculture is that if everyone just tends their own garden, we can end our water woes and feed ourselves throughout the world. But as you can see in this picture, not everybody's on board with this, nor do I believe they ever will be. The house over here is a typical yard with a giant setback to separate the house from the noisy street. And indeed, 57% of the world lives in cities, not in rural homesteads. And these cities occupy just 3% of the land. And most of that area is devoted to cars in the form of parking lots, streets, the setbacks that I just showed you, and the green strips between sidewalks and the street. So the hope of Edenicity is that with much better urban design, we can combine permaculture and urbanism to unburden those large landscapes now occupied by mechanized agriculture and restore the lost half of life on Earth. And we can do this in a wide variety of climates. This is Davis, California in the United States. It gets 50 centimeters or 20 inches of rain per year, which is about half the US average and about a third as much as Southeast Asia. And as you can see, by August, it gets very dry. A few years back, I visited a permaculture neighborhood in Davis, California, where the yards were just brimming with life. This is an urban neighborhood, but it looks very much like the Zaytuna farm landscape with rich layered food forest plantings. This incredibly green, rich environment was no accident. I found a really nice layout of the neighborhood in this free paper that you can find online. I've provided a link in the description and eventually the comments. And while you're checking those out, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already so we can reconnect in the future. Anyway, in the town of Davis, Village Homes occupies a relatively small space that is still pretty much on the outskirts, and it was designed in radically different ways from typical suburban America. These dashed lines are footpaths for pedestrians and bicyclists that link backyard common areas together in the community to a large park. The streets were so narrow that the local firefighters were convinced that they couldn't get their equipment through in an emergency, but with actual live demonstrations with traffic cones, they were eventually convinced and gave the project their stamp of approval. The fact that every street into the neighborhood ended in a cul-de-sac was no accident, because it made the neighborhood a destination and never a shortcut on the way to somewhere else. Having lived in a university-adjacent neighborhood that had a lot of through traffic, I can vouch for how destructive that is of any sense of place or community. But where this 244-unit, 28-hectare or 70-acre site really shined is in the shape of those backyard commons. Because here at the neighborhood scale, where rainwater retention basins, otherwise known in permaculture as swales, which buffered floods and droughts for the neighborhood and recharged the groundwater, making it a much greener place year-round than the surrounding environment. There's just no way to accomplish something like this, working just one household at a time. It takes urbanism and permaculture to create something like this in the city. If permaculture is permanent agriculture, urbanism is the design of large-scale systems that meet people's needs in the city. This is the future of permaculture and urbanism, or you could just call it Edenicity. With that said, let me leave you with a list of water upgrades to Edenize existing cities. In many cities, stormwater is seen as a pure hazard and not as a resource. So the Edenicity upgrade is to naturalize creek borders, and this is being done in many cities throughout the world already. The next step is to upgrade damaged housing stock with multifamily housing to increase the density to the point where we can begin to replace car infrastructure with planted swales and dams on about 80% of the vacated car infrastructure, footpaths and plazas, 
buses and about 10%, and public transit on the remaining 10%. Notice how, in true permaculture urbanist style, the water, plantings, and transportation all work together to support a whole that is much more compelling than the sum of the parts. It's a new direction for cities, and it's the single most important thing we can do to unburden large landscapes throughout the world so that we can restore the lost half of life on Earth. Thanks, as always, to our wonderful patrons for financially supporting this channel. And if you'd like to learn more about Edenicity, check out these videos here. Take care, stay green, see you next time.